Man should welcome the worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is always good forever. This is your call to worship. Amen. Good morning, 4th Street family. Definitely good to be in the house of the Lord. I just want everybody to make sure we put Jesus first and we continue to pray and look to Jesus during these times because he knows the future and he can provide our every need. If you have an article of faith from a previous program, we'll be reciting article of faith number seven, regeneration. If you're viewing from a device, you can read along by the device you're viewing from. We're reading unison on the count of three. One, two, three. We believe that the scripture teach that in order to be saved, the sinner must be regenerated or born again. That regeneration consists in giving a holy disposition to the mind that is an affected in a matter above our comprehension by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with divine truth. So a secure a voluntary obedience to the gospel and the proper evidence appears in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. Amen. Our church covenant. And it reads, having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter this covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church and knowledge, holiness, and comfort. To promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, disciplines, and doctrines. To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We are also engaged to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk certain spaces in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagement and exemplary our deportment, to avoid our talent, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drink and to be, as a beverage and to be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mind for the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can call the spirit of this company and the principles of God's word. And now to him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be the power and glory forever. Amen. Our opening hymn. Thank you. 
you allowed, let and permitted your blood to pour from your body all over us. And the blood still works today. And we want to thank you now that it has power, pulling power, saving power, salvation power. We want to thank you for allowing us to see the month of May. We want to thank you now for waking us up this morning with our minds stayed on you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that allows us to be wanting to be in your presence today. And oh Lord, we pray that as we move through this worship, that you would allow us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Knowing, Lord, that we need you, we love you, we adore you, and we thank you for all that you do. Thank you for those that are listening. Thank you for those that are viewing. Thank you for our live stream on his Facebook. Oh God, we pray now for our pastor as he preaches another one of the powerful sermons as he did this morning about storms. We all go through storms. We just want to thank you now for the opportunity to hear it and to hear it from the Word of God. Make us stronger now and imbue Pastor Flakes with your power and empower him by your Holy Spirit. And as he preaches, let some unsaved soul become a member of the family of God through faith in Jesus Christ. This is our prayer now. Prayed in the precious name of Jesus. We ask it all. Thank God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as you are. Please pay attention to the screen for this morning's announcements and greetings. Good morning, 4th Street family. These are your announcements for the week of Sunday, May 2nd, 2021. 4th Street welcomes you back to a possible return to in-person worship starting Sunday, May 9th, 2021. Pastor Flakes and First Lady Jacqueline Flakes would like to thank all members for the gifts and kind gestures shown for the ninth pastoral anniversary. Attention all members, please send in your Mother's Day photo to the church office to be featured in the Mother's Day tribute on Sunday, May 9th. Please email to 4thStreetMBC at gmail.com. There will be a young adults block party held on Saturday, May 22nd, starting at 11 a.m. in the church parking lot. Included will be Tuesday's taco truck, desserts, and a DJ on hand for great fun. Bring your lawn or foldable chairs, blankets, and your smile for a long-awaited fellowship. The 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church Summer Camp will be held on June 1st through July 30th starting at 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. for children ages 5 to 12 years old. Breakfast and lunch will be provided. There is a one-time registration and activity fee of $74 and a weekly fee of $99. Activities included will be Freedom Academy reading and math lessons, STEM lessons, art, and much more. For more information, please contact Sister Jacqueline Flakes. Virtual Vacation Bible School will be held on Monday, June 7th through Friday, June 11th. This year's theme is Get On Board, Cruising with God's Family. Pack your bags and get on board. Virtual COP classes or Certificate of Progress program classes will be held on May 28th through the 29th. For more information, please contact Sister Mary Strozier Weaver. Aspiring Christians in Healthcare Scholarship Opportunity is available to 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church members who are students planning to major in a healthcare field. To download the application, visit our website at 4thStreet.org or contact the church office. The deadline to apply is Sunday, June 6. The Nellie Melson Bridges Memorial Scholarship is also available to 4th Street members and must be in currently enrolled in an accredited college or university. For more information about this scholarship, please contact Sister Carolyn Bridges Graves. Causes to Celebrate 
Congratulations to Sister Courtney Lyons, daughter of Brother Ernest and Sister Vicki Lyons, who graduated on Friday, April 30th from the Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts in Austin, Texas. Congratulations to Sister Raven Rivers, daughter of Brother Douglas and Sister Lativia Rivers, who will graduate from Auburn University at Montgomery on Saturday, May 8th. And congratulations to Reverend Frederick Small, who will graduate from Beulah Heights University on Saturday, May 8th. As a reminder, weekly Bible study is held on Sundays at 5 p.m., Mondays at 11, and on Wednesdays at 6 p.m., with the exception of the fourth Wednesday. You may join us via Zoom or Facebook Live. Also remember to join us for Transformation Church School classes at 9.30 a.m. each Sunday via Zoom. Please join us for our Christian family Training for Service and Discipleship, Intermediate Men and Women's, Women's, Men's, Young Adult, or Primary Class. For more information about Zoom meeting invite details, visit our website or contact the church office. Virtual children's classes are held each Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. For more information, please contact Sister Sharonda Porter. Please mark your calendar for these upcoming events in May. On Monday, May 3rd, will be the Marriage Ministry Meeting at 6 p.m. On Tuesday, May 4th through Thursday, May 6th, will be the Virtual Spring Revival starting at 7 p.m. nightly. On Sunday, May 9th, join us for our Mother's Day Worship Experience. Sunday, May 23rd, will be our Pentecost and Annual Partners in Christ Caring Ministry Day. On Sunday, May 23rd, also will be the 28th Annual Memorial Day, Solidarity and Ingathering Day during our 1045 a.m. Worship Experience. Sympathy is extended to the following families, Sister LaDonna Peters and Patrick Peters and family for the passing of her mother, Donna Miller of Sacramento, California. Also, sympathy is extended to Sister Mildred Wynn and family for the passing of her cousin, Patrice Moni Barnes. Please keep these families in your thoughts and in your prayers. At this time, we ask that you please direct your attention to the names provided here of members on our prayer list. Please keep them and their families in your thoughts and prayers as well. At this time, we'd like to welcome and acknowledge all of our guests who are joining us today in our live stream audience. We're so pleased that you were led to join us today and hope that you'll be led to join us again. If you're interested in accepting the invitation to discipleship, please contact the church office following services today at 706-324-2055 or email us at 4streetmbc at gmail.com. Tithing alternatives are as follows. You may mail your check or money order to P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia 31901. Or you may use the finest drop box located inside the educational building. Please remember to wear your mask or give online via Givelify. You may download our 4th Street mobile app or find Givelify on our website at 4thstreet.org. Please remember to stay connected with us through virtual worship. Our live stream service is held each Sunday on our Facebook and YouTube during our 745 and 1045 a.m. worship experience, or join us on our radio broadcast, Foxy 105, at 8 a.m. each Sunday, or on television, WRBL-TV Channel 3 at 8.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast of our services. We also encourage you to download our mobile app, 4th Street Mobile App. As a reminder, the church office hours are Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Saturdays at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you have information for the weekly announcements, please submit them by Wednesday at 4 p.m. via email to 4streetmbc at gmail.com. God bless and make it a great week. so very much um, we're at still the announcements and uh, we want to remind you about Givelify so you still go to Givelify so we have to make sure that we play that each time um, for get that that order uh, but we thank you for the media ministry and what you all do and um, so God bless you let me just go ahead and say thank you 
for your connecting with us this morning. Uh, we thank you for your continued participation through the platforms uh, that we have been given the opportunity to use to continue to connect with you um, in the streaming live congregation. Uh, we are very thankful for your prayers, for your support. We thank you for connecting with us on yesterday through our um, um, pastor's cabinet. We had a wonderful, wonderful pastor's cabinet, so we're grateful to your participation. Let me just uh, congratulate uh, Adric um, Garrett. He retired from the military, and so we are thankful for his service and his dedication, his devotion to uh, the this country uh, in serving in the in the army. Let me also congratulate those uh, who are graduating from high school, college, and other um, uh, achievements uh, of matriculating through various universities and colleges. Uh, we want to say to you, congratulations. May God continue to bless you and keep you uh, in your next endeavor. Um, we want to also recognize our Girl Scouts. Uh, we recognize that um, Jackie McCall, Jeanette Pruitt, Tara Bynum, Jerrica Grant, um, Ariel Gaddy, uh, Katina Frazier, uh, Danielle Frazier, um, and others who were identified for their service to um, the Girl Scouts. And so we want to continue to uh, support and to encourage you know, parents who have young daughters uh, to encourage them to be a part of this wonderful Girl Scouts as well as parents who have young boys for our Boy Scouts. So thank you so very much. Let me just ask those who have had loved ones transition uh, you heard in the announcements, we want to ask that you will continue to lift them up in prayer, lift our family in prayer, uh, as the bereavement process uh, is the journey in which we find ourselves on. So keep all of those members in prayer. Uh, we also want to ask that you prepare your hearts and your mind in praying for the possible return on next Sunday uh, for person-to-person -person worship, those who will come. Uh, we're asking that you would be prepared and we want you to uh, help us help you and you help us by wearing your mask, uh, by being prepared to have your temperature checked, but also be prepared to provide information prior to entering uh, your name, your address number. Our clerk team will be there uh, to help with that. So we are asking you will follow the instructions of the ushers. We have uh, um, planned out five to six feet distancing uh, when you come into the sanctuary as well as seating. Those who will come, one, by yourself, you will go to the left when you enter your sanctuary. Uh, the, the ushers will show you uh, or will guide you to areas that are open. Uh, those who are coming as family, families will be seated in the center aisle. So we ask families to be available and cooperate uh, with the ushers as they would lead you to the seating in the center. If there are those who will come um, two or more but may not be family, uh, you will go to the right of the sanctuary as you enter into the sanctuary. Uh, the ushers will lead you to seating um, in the uh, right section. Uh, and then the balcony will be used for um, overflow uh, as well as our uh, educational building fellowship hall. So we've made preparation. Uh, we ask that you will please cooperate with us. Uh, and we want to make sure that we have a decent and in order worship. Uh, we have gone to the extra mile even to the point of investing in a um, ionization filtering system that is being it will be installed in our heating and air condition system to to make sure that our air quality and our air circulation within the sanctuary as well as in our fellowship hall 
is of such uh, that uh, it, it, it is, is, is quality air. Uh, and so uh, we have gone to invest in that because we believe that we want to protect as you as you come back and provide the best uh, quality of air that we can. Uh, so we're expecting those who come in uh, to wear their mask. We are asking uh, those children who are three years old and above, they would wear masks as well. Three years old and above, we're asking that you wear a mask. If you come and your temperature is 99 and above, uh, we will ask that you will return back home, connect with us virtually, and then call your physician. Again, we're taking these, um, these, these, these measures to ensure the protection of everyone and also the protection of you. So we are asking that you would come in the spirit of cooperation, come in the spirit of thanksgiving, that we can praise and worship God for allowing us to be patient, prayerful, and if it's his will, that on Mother's Day we will be returning. Uh, I will give the uh, final decision on Monday or Tuesday uh, that will confirm uh, that, this, that decision. But right now, uh, we are praying that that will come to fruition. Now, we ask that you will continue to um, support and reach out to each other through um, Bible study, through Pick'em. Uh, we really appreciate your continued support in reaching out and staying connected one with another. Uh, we're encouraging others uh, to continue that as well. Um, so God bless you, God keep you, is our prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Uh, before we pray, I wanna thank all of you for your expression of love on Pastor's Appreciation. Uh, you all really expressed your gratitude and your uh, graciousness through the cards and the demonstration of texts and telephone calls, uh, and so we, we were just humbled that you would think enough of think enough of us to express your love in the manner in which you did. So God bless you, God keep you is our prayer. Dear gracious Father, we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to worship once again. We pray that you will continue to bless those who have connected through the streaming live platforms that have been made available to us. That your word will go forward. Worship will be engaging. We pray your blessings upon the sick and the shunning. Pray your blessings upon those in hospitals and nursing homes and ICUs. Pray your blessings upon those who've had loved ones to transition and they're breathing. Pray your peace, your comfort upon them. Bless our children, our grandchildren. Bless parents across this land. Grandparents. Bless marriages. Bless relationships that will be pleasing unto you. And Lord, we ask that you would bless someone with salvation today, deliverance today. Bless someone that you will touch where no doctors can touch, touch where no medicine can touch. Bless in your own special way. Bless churches all across this land, pastors and Christian educators. Bless that your word does not fall on stony ground, that your word does not fall among thorns and thistles, but as your word go forward, Lord, in this pluralistic, relativistic society which we live, that it will, it will be planted deeply in the hearts, good soil. Lives will be changed, transformed. Minds will be changed. To think more highly, to think more spiritual than earthly. Bless the world, bless this nation, this state, this city, Community, bless Lord, as only you know how. We come crying out to you. Bless now. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Now we're asking for a selection and after that, we ask that you would open your hearts and your mind to receive but thus says the Lord.
Congregation can just go ahead and say how much you love him. You don't know what he's done for me. He's given me the victory. I truly love. I love the Lord. Yeah. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead Tell somebody How much you love him Glory 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 You don't know Somebody in the hospital You don't know Somebody was diagnosed with cancer You don't know Somebody was deep in sin. You don't know what he's done for me. Giving me the victory. I love him. I love him. I love him.
Go ahead. Praise his holy name. Maybe you're in your living room. Maybe you're in your kitchen. Maybe you're riding in your car, wherever you are. If you know what he's done for you, you ought to go ahead and give God some praise. He woke you up this morning. You ought to go ahead and give him some praise. Started you on your way. Even though you may not be here person to person, but you can still go ahead and worship him. Getting ready, getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. Come on, come on, come on. You want to go ahead and give God praise because he's worthy be praised to God be the glory thank you sister Holyfield thank you musicians for reminding us how much we truly love the Lord to God be the glory thank you thank you thank you thank you streaming live congregation for testifying to let somebody know through the streaming live audience how much you love him whether it's through hand claps reactions whether it's through hearts streaming across the live stream somebody ought to know how much you love the Lord to God be the glory I want to ask if you would turn with me now to the gospel according to Mark chapter number 4 we'll begin reading with verses 35 and ending in verse 41 the gospel according to Mark chapter 4 verses 35 through 30 to 35 through 41 will be our sermon scriptures now, sermon text will be coming out of those verses as well. I want to ask if we would just hear, listen to what Mark recorded under the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit, starting with verse 35. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side and leaving the crowd they took him with them in the boat just as he was and other boats were with him and a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even wind and sea obey him? I want to use as a sermon title, I want to tag this text this morning, 
what lessons can we learn in the storms of life? What lessons can we learn in the storms of life? Reverend Dickerson, when I was a boy, growing up in Pumpkin Bottom, Alabama, I liked thunderstorms. I watched the rowing wind blow leaves from the tree branches and listened to the raindrops beat down on the roof of the house, beating up against the windows, dropping down from the dark gray sky. And if we were at my grandmama Elizabeth and grandpa Napoleon house, she would make us unplug every electrical thing. That meant no TV, no radio, all lights were cut off. My sister and I and with cousins who may have come by uh, had to sit quietly. As a matter of fact, she would say, be quiet. God is at work. While the storm was active, rain, thunder, and lightning, we had to sit quietly. But we found a way to endure the storm until it blew over. My brothers and sisters in the streaming live congregation, the remnant here, sometimes storms can cause a lot of damage and create chaos in the lives of many. While the news media focuses on environmental storms, there are other storms just as devastating that people experience every single day, such as death of a loved one, sickness, financial hardship, mental illness, and broken relationships. These storms of life threaten our peace, threaten our comfort, threaten our joy, and often bring about fear, doubt, helplessness, hopelessness. In our text this morning, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, we find the disciples themselves caught in an untamed storm while on a ship in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And simultaneously in a spiritual storm of fear and doubt. They feared for their lives. Jesus, if you would notice in the text, was fast asleep in the stern of the ship while the storm was raging. As a matter of fact, one translation said he was sleeping on a cushion. They woke him up. And notice what they said to Jesus in verse 38, Mark chapter 4. They cried out, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Another translation puts it this way. Jesus, do you not care that we are dying? We may drown. And oh, my brothers and sisters, there may be someone that's in a storm right now who may be crying out, Jesus, where are you? Do you not care? But notice how Jesus responded in verse 40. Jesus woke up. Don't miss that. Which is indicative that he heard their cry. And I'm just here to tell you when you're in the midst of a storm and you cry out, Jesus will hear your cry. Your prayer. The Bible says Jesus woke up. 
And notice how he responds. First, to the storm. It says, he calmed the storm. And then he addressed them. Questioned their faith in him. They were no longer afraid of the storm, but very, very afraid of the supernatural power of Jesus that led them to wonder who he was. That even the wind and sea obeyed him. Now, my brothers and sisters, I, I just want to, to, to let you know the disciples then learn significant lessons that day that transformed their lives, changed the way they thought, shifted their paradigm. We too, as disciples today, followers of Christ, can learn a lot from their experiences as we face the storms of our own lives. And I just come by to tell you, there are storms coming if you're not already in one. Storms don't have to have your, a GPS to find your address. Storms can come unexpectedly. Storms will come. But the question I want to raise to you today is what did they learn then referencing the disciples on the boat in the midst of a storm on the Sea of Galilee? What did they learn then and what can we learn today from them to deal with our storms? And I'm glad that you ask. I'm glad that you're willing to, to really uh, listen to the lessons that we can glean from the storm on the Sea of Galilee and these disciples and Jesus. So here's lesson number one. They learn then, referencing the disciples, and we can learn, listen, God permits the storms of life. Don't miss that. Now the idea that God permits bad things to happen to his children is a very, very hard pill for some of us to swallow because there are those who are, have been locked and loaded and they are ingrained with this teaching that, 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 that all things, all good things, come from God. And if I just ask you to fill in this blank, God is good, everybody say all the time. But God allows, he permits storms. I know it doesn't make sense for a loving savior and a Lord to allow his followers to suffer. I just come by to tell you, Jesus tells us the answer to this problem. That many have been hoodwinked and bamboozled in the thinking that we should not have any problems in life. There are religions that teach that you are not to suffer. You can name, you can't claim problems. You, 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 you can claim prosperity. You can claim healing. You can claim this and claim that. Name this and name that in the name of prosperity. But listen to what Jesus tells his disciples then. And what he tells us today. In John chapter 16, 33, he says, in this world, you will have tribulations. In this world, you will have problems. 
In this world, you will suffer. Now, I know that don't play well with prosperity teaching. I know that don't play well with word of faith movements. I know that does not play well with the name and claim it movement. But the Bible says, Jesus says, in the world, you will have trouble. But then he says to those of us who truly believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he says, but take heart. In other words, he's saying, be courageous, be of good cheer. Tharsio, I have overcome the world. Jesus promised us that we will have trials and tribulations in this world. But because he has overcome the world, in other words, he's saying, we can trust him in the storms. And when storms hit, we often wonder, why is this happening? I don't know about you, but maybe there's someone that's sitting next to you. Maybe there's someone you know on your job who may be asking the question, why is this happening? In James chapter 1, we see that God has a purpose for every trial that we experience. God uses trials, he uses tribulations, he uses storms to test the genuineness and the depth of our faith. And it's not for him, but it's to expose to us the genuineness and the depth of our faith. He uses trials, he uses tribulations, he uses storms to get our attention. He uses trials and tribulations, he uses storms to bring many of us to repentance, to turn us away from the world, to turn us away from our own selfishness and turn us to God, to turn us to Jesus, to turn us to Christ for the forgiveness of our sins we may have eternal life he uses storms to mature us in the will the way and the word of God he uses storms to help us understand who he truly is the disciples faith in Jesus was being tested in the storm they questioned the very character of Jesus Listen, implying that he did not care for them. Is there anybody ever been in a storm that you've actually questioned the character of Jesus? Do you care? Why am I going through this? Why do I have cancer? Don't you care? Why am I going through this? Don't you really care? Why did you take my brother? Why did you take my sister? Don't you really care? Why am I having all these financial problems? Don't you really care? Why am I going through this dark time in my life? Why, why, why? The disciples' faith in Jesus was being tested in the storm and he will test your faith. They questioned the very character of Jesus, implying that he did not care. And all oh, my brothers and sisters, we may feel the same way when we face a health crisis, as I've already indicated. When we have problems in relationship and marriage, when we have work-related crises, that causes us to lose our job, that causes us to lose our home, that causes us to lose relationships. But notice what First Peter Chapter number 5, verse 7 says, Peter reminds us under the guidance of the Holy Spirit to cast all of our cares and concerns on Jesus because he cares for us. Cast all of your cares through all of your troubles through all of your anxiety through all of your insecurity upon him because he cares for you Jesus 
permits the storms of life. And that's why it's good when you get in the storms of life that you remember this hymn, What a Friend, we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs he bears. What a privilege. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, 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 what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not care. In the midst of the storm, we do not carry. In the midst of our depression, we do not carry. In the midst of the trouble and the trial, and tri we do not carry everything. I hurt pain to God in prayer. So the lesson number one, God permits the storms of life. And here's lesson number two. They, the disciples then that was on that boat where the water was filling the boat and they believed that they were about to die, learn then. And we can learn from their experiences now. Jesus' power is in control of the storms of life. Don't miss it. Jesus' power is in control of the storms of life. That's good news, y'all don't know when to shout. The disciples then were filled with great fear when Jesus rebuked the wind and told the sea. In Mark chapter 4, verse 39, when he spoke, peace, be still. And one must understand that what was being revealed in that time, in that storm, that Jesus was God in flesh and Jesus ruled everything. Is there anybody in this house that he created everything? Jesus displayed an amazing, miraculous power over nature. Why? Because he created it. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word is God. Nothing was a cre created apart from him. We learn along with the disciples that Jesus can be trusted in the storm. In any storm, Jesus can be trusted. And this is because he is sovereign. He rules. He reigns. You do remember when Jesus came walking on the water around about 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, and the disciples was in the boat, and they thought it was a ghost. And Jesus says, be not afraid. Fear not. It is I. God's sovereignty is described also in Psalm 24, verses 1 through 2. Listen to what the psalmist writes. The earth is the Lord's. And everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it on the waters. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus, God in flesh, is in perfect control of the universe. And I know everything may look out of control, but let me just reassure you that he's in control. Ultimately, he's in control. He is involved in everything in this world and is directing all things, people, nature, to fulfill his divine purposes. And when facing the storms of life, my brothers and sisters, understanding the power, understanding the sovereignty of our amazing God in flesh, Jesus the Christ is essential. The disciples showed us both what to do and what not to do. They, they were right to go to Jesus. Yes, they were right to go to Jesus in the storm. Yeah, you want to know where he, you, you want to, you want to desire, you, you want to know that he's on board. He was in the hinder parts of the ship. 
We have to give credit to these disciples that in their fear, in their doubt, even though that storm was raging and the lightning was flashing and, and the waves was rolling and, and yet they went to Jesus. However, they fell short because they went to him in fear. They went to him in doubt. After seeing all the miracles that Jesus had already done before they got to this point, and yet they still feared and doubted because the object of their focus was a storm. Jesus wanted them to have faith in him in the midst of this terrible storm. And oh, my brothers, there's a word for somebody out there today, someone in here today. To really examine what's the object of your focus, what's the object of your faith when you're in your storm. So we are reminded in Philippians chapter 4 verses 5 through 6, listen, we learn how to replace our fear and our anxiety with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. You do remember what Isaiah 26 3 says, he says, if you keep your mind stayed on him. He will give you perfect, mature peace. So one's peace is not predicated on whether you're in or out of the storm. Your peace is in Jesus the Christ. The one who can speak to the storm and say, peace, be still. We are freed from the grip of fear and anxiety when we thank him for his sovereign power and purpose for the storms. We can trust his promise that his peace will guard our hearts, will guard our minds so that we will not be fearful or anxious during the storms of life. Lesson number one, God permits the storms of life. He allows them. Lesson number two, Jesus' power is in control of the storms of life. He recognizes sovereignty. And here's lesson number three. They, the disciples then, learn and we can learn. Jesus' presence cares for you in the storms of life. And oh, my brothers and sisters, isn't it good to know the presence of Jesus? He's the one that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's the one that says, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. In their fear, the disciples question if Jesus cared for them he asked them listen to what Jesus asked them why are you so afraid do you still have no faith and I asked you the question to those of you who declare that you are followers of Jesus Christ you declare that you are saved sanctified filled with the Holy Spirit and when trials come when storms come when tsunamis come in your life do you still have no faith? He's gotten you through one storm. He's gotten you through another storm. And here comes a tsunami. Do you still have no faith? Not only did Jesus rebuke the wind and the waves, but he rebuked the disciples for their unbelief. Their unbelief caused their fear and their fear caused them to question whether Jesus really cared. And oh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus expected them and he expects us to know that he was for them. And that he did not want to destroy them. That's why the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? He says, all things work together for good. He didn't say everything is good. He said, all things work together for good 
for those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. Storms of life are part of God's sanctification plan. Revealing your heart and growing you into his image. He wants to extract in the storm the impatience. He wants to extract in the storm your individuality in terms of just depending upon you, me, myself, and I. He wants to extract the insecurity, the insufficiency. He wants to, to, to grow your faith. He wants to grow you in the will, the way, and the word of God. He wants to shift your focus off of you in the storm and place your focus squarely on him and believe in him. He promises to be with you through any storm that he allows in your life. Allow the storms, my brothers and sisters, of life to move you to trust God through Jesus Christ and dwell and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Allow the storm to move you to trust God as your refuge and your deliverer. Allow the storms of life to cause you to become dependent solely on the Savior. So I ask you the question as I get ready to go to my seat. What did they learn then on the Sea of Galilee? What did they learn then in the midst of the storm? And what can we learn from their experiences? Number one, we can learn God permits storms of life. Number two, Jesus' power is in control of the storms of life. He's sovereign. And number three, they learn then, and we can learn Jesus' presence was an indication that he cares for you in the storm of life. Notice no disciple jump ship to try and save themselves. They went to the one, the Savior. They went to Jesus. Even though he may have rebuked them, they didn't jump ship. They recognized the sovereignty. Jesus wanted them then and he wants us to know that he is God in flesh. He is the Messiah. He, was, he is the sent one. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He wanted to show them that he had control. And I want you to come prayerfully to understand today through learning that God permits the storms of life, Jesus' power is in control of the storms of life that, that they learned then and we can learn now. Jesus' presence for you while you're in the storm shows that he cares for you. But oh, my brothers and sisters, there's another lesson that Jesus taught in the fullness of time. God sent his only begotten son in this turbulent, sinful, storm society where sin wreaking havoc, sin causing all kinds of destruction to lives, and yet he was conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit. Grew up in a little town called Nazareth. 
And as he was preparing for his public ministry, at the age of 30, he began to show that he was truly the Messiah sent to bring salvation to those who would come to believe in him. He walked the dusty streets of Palestine, giving sight to the blind and making lame men and women walk, showing that God cared for them in the midst of their infirmities. And you do remember with that woman with the 12 years of issue of blood, as he was on his way to Jairus' house, Jesus stopped and he said to that woman with the 12 years of issue of blood, thy faith has made you well. And Jesus was only saying that God is a compassionate God. God is a caring God. God will come down to where you are and God will be in the storm with you. And as Jesus was making his way up to Jerusalem, and there was a man sitting at the pool of Bethesda, approximately about 38 long years. And Jesus showed that God truly cared by stopping and telling that man to pick up his bed and walk. Jesus was showing that he had power and authority over that situation that looked impossible. And Jesus kept walking up towards to Jerusalem. Jesus was walking his way up to Calvary. And now we find Jesus on that Friday. They put nails in his hands put nails in his feet they lifted him high and stretched him wide and Jesus crying out God forgive them for they know not what they do showing that God cared in the midst of his dying in the midst of shedding an innocent blood Jesus do you really care and I just tell you just keep looking at Calvary on that Friday between the 6th to the ninth hour if you truly want the answer the answer is at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light it was there by faith I received my spiritual sight and now I'm joyous I'm happy all the day why are you happy because I come to realize not by my own intelligence but I come to realize by the convicting and the converting of the Holy Spirit that Jesus took my place on a hill called Calvary he died while I was yet a sinner he died for you while you were yet a sinner showing the unconditional love of God showing the mercy of God showing the grace of God showing the compassion of God Jesus do you really care and Jesus Jesus, hanging on that cross on that Friday kept glorifying his father saying to a dying world how much God truly cares how much God truly loved them he took on the wrath of God he took on the condemnation of God he took on the judgment of God just for you and just for me he paid the penalty for sin because the the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life he broke the dominion of sin broke the power of sin he kept on showing and answering the question yes God cares look at him on that cross on that Friday dying an innocent one is there anybody in the house who committed no sin 
but he became sin that we could have eternal life Jesus do you really care the Bible says that he locked his head in his shoulder and he gave up willingly his life just for you and just for me completing the mission that his father sent him on the Bible says that he died to the world began to rock like a drunken man is there anybody in the house he died that the curtain writ from top to bottom in the holy temple he died that the sun the S-U-N refused to shine he died showing that God truly cared he died where a centurion soldier at the foot of the cross cried out as a witness and a testimony surely surely this must be the son of God and I'm so glad that the story didn't stop there Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus went to Pilate requested his dead body put it in a bar a new tomb and he stayed there continuing to show God's love continuing to show God's mercy continuing to show God's grace is there anybody in the house he stayed there woes fraught Saturday morning and all Saturday night but I'm so glad that God loved us enough and loved this son enough that early early Sunday morning he pulled the sting from death pulled the victory from the grave rolled it up in his divine hand placed it in the vault of eternity and early the Bible says he was raised from the dead with all power resurrection power saving power loving power forgiving power regeneration power all power in his hands in the heaven and in earth and I'm so glad that the story didn't stop there he walked around for 40 days showing himself to his disciples showing himself to 500 or more proving God's promise is absolutely true proving God's power is absolutely real send it to sit on the right hand throne of the father where he he is interceding for you and for me but one of these old days I don't know when I don't know where I don't know what time but one thing I know the Bible says he's coming again he's coming again one day he's coming again soon is there anybody out there is there anybody in here who knows what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, you ought to say amen. 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 Is there anybody out there? Anybody in here? Believe he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Uh, to be praised uh, from the rising of the sun uh, to the going down of the same uh, he's worthy hallelujah uh, praise his holy name uh, he's worthy to be praised for you and for me Learn the lesson that God permits the storms of life. Learn the lesson that Jesus' power is in control of the storms of life. Believe in him as your Lord and Savior right now. He wants you to know. If you confess with your mouth. Believe sincerely in your heart. That Jesus the Christ is Lord. And God has raised him from the dead. You will be heard a still small voice telling me to steal the fight on. He promised never to leave me. He will never leave you. 
you have a love trust obedient relationship with God through Jesus Christ if you wait for whatever reason and you're desiring restoration you dedicate your life to Christ leave your name and your number your contact information and we'll follow with you as well we pray that these words will encourage you but also convict you that you will examine where you are in terms of your faith your trust your belief in Jesus the Christ God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. We want to now continue in worship. Jesus is a generous Savior. We believe that the Holy Spirit is a generous help empowered by the Holy Spirit. We want to give you the privilege and the opportunity to worship, demonstrating the generosity spirit through offering. We're going to give you a moment. Those who want to, to bring your tithe and offering through GiveLify online giving, we ask that you would go ahead and go to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church site. Look for the emblem, the crib, the cross, and the empty tomb. And you can bring your tithe and your offering right now. If you choose to drop it off, we ask that you would go ahead and take time right now and prepare your envelope that the church provides. And we ask that you would update any unchanged information. Designate specifically your tithe and your offerings. And we ask that you would bring the tithe and the offering, drop it off through Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come through the educational building, Christian education building, and then drop it off in the inside drop-off box. We ask that you would practice physical distancing. We ask that you would wear your mask when you come. God bless you. If you choose to mail it in, we ask that you will prepare, you will prepare right now that envelope that the church provide. Update any unchanged, any changed information on the envelope. Designate specifically your tithe and offering and put it into your addressed envelope with the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Address it, P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia 31901 and mail it in. We thank you for worshiping. We thank you for demonstrating the generosity of God through Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Dear God, we thank you for the givers. We thank you for those who would give through tithe and offering. We pray that you will bless them with health and strength, bless their families, provide for their every needs according to your riches and glory. We pray that we will continue to be good stewards over that which you will entrust to us, that we can continue to advance your kingdom, that you may get glory, you may get honor, you may get praise. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus we lift this offering up to you. Amen. Every first Sunday, we set aside time to minister the Lord's Supper. And we ask now that you will prepare your cracker or your bread. We ask that you would get your juice as we prepare to carry out the Lord's Supper. While Jesus and his disciples were sitting in the upper room, the Bible says Jesus took the bread. He broke it and he blessed it. Dear God, we thank you for this, this bread that is symbolic of your body which you gave for us on Calvary. We pray, Lord, if there's anything that we've said or anything that we've done that has displeased you throughout this week, throughout this year, we confess and we repent of it because we believe you've already forgiven us. But our re confessing and repenting is an expression of our faith in what you've already done. So bless now, consecrate our minds and our hearts and we will have the right spirit to partake of this bread. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The Bible says after he had blessed the bread, he says, this is my body which I've given for you. Take, eat all of it. The Bible says likewise he took the cup, which is symbolic of his blood, and he blessed it. Lord, we thank you for this cup. We thank you for the atonement for our sins by the shedding of innocent blood. Now bless now. In the precious and glorious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. After he had blessed the cup he says this is a new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it.
The Bible says after they had partaking of the Lord's Supper, they left the upper room, went out to the Mount of Olives where they prayed and sung a hymn. There's a brighter day ahead for Jesus has said if you trust in him he said there'll be a brighter day ahead there's a brighter day ahead in God's word we read if we trust in him he said thank you O heavenly father for all that you have done and now we pray that your word does not fall among thorns and thistles your word do not fall among the white the wayside but it'll penetrate minds and hearts to transform minds and hearts that they will come to truly trust and depend upon you while in the storm of life now we pray that you would dismiss us from this place but never, never from your grace, never from your presence, never from your power, never from your protection, never from your provision. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus, from whom all blessings flow. Let us all sing.
the Holy Spirit, power to all. May God's blessings be upon you. Walk in 